Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. This is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel. And you're joining us for our time of daily reflections. It's a time where we gather Monday through Thursday to read some scripture together, to spend some time in prayer with the scripture, and to hear some, uh, some gleanings from uh, John Wesley in our devotional book entitled Renew My Heart. So I see Dick and Nancy are joining us this morning. Glad you guys are joining us. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, delve into uh, some some scripture this morning. Oh, I see Tina's joining us this morning. So our first reading this morning is from Psalm 50, verses 1 through 12. Listen to these words from the psalmist. From the rising of the sun to where it sets, God, the Lord God, speaks, calling out to the earth. From Zion, perfect, perfect in beauty, God shines brightly. Our God is coming. He won't keep quiet. A devouring fire is before him. A storm rages all around him. God calls out to the skies above and to the earth in order to judge his people. Bring my faithful to me, those who made a covenant with, my, with me by sacrifice. The skies proclaim his righteousness, because God himself is the judge. Shalah. Listen, my people, I will now speak. Israel, I will now testify against you. I am God, your God. I'm not punishing you for your sacrifices or for your entirely burnt offerings, which are always before me. I won't accept bulls from your house or goats from your corrals because every forest animal already belongs to me, as do the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every mountain bird, even the insects in the fields are mine. Even if I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you, because the whole world and everything in it already belongs to me. Ooh, some pretty good words from, uh, from the psalmist this morning. Well, good morning, Karen. Glad you're joining us. And then our, uh, our next reading this morning comes from 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Listen to these inspired words from the writer John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born from God. Whoever loves someone who is a parent loves the child born to the parent. This is how we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep God's commandments. This is the love of God. We keep God's commandments. God's commandments are not difficult because everyone who is born from God defeats the world. And this is the victory that has, that has defeated the world, our faith. Who defeats the world? Isn't it the one who believes that Jesus is God's son? So that's our, our scripture today. Well, good morning, Mom. Glad to see you're joining us as well. So uh, let's spend a few minutes in prayerful reflection with the scripture as we focus on verse 4 from our reading from 1 John today. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. From the Common English Bible, Because everyone who is born from God defeats the world, and this is the victory that has defeated the world our faith. From the King James Version. 
For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. From the New Revised Standard Version, the NRSV. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. From the New Living Translation, the NLT. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. Amen. Amen. So we're continuing to use our Renew My Heart uh, from John Wesley. And uh, the one for today is entitled The Kingdom of God. Um, I'm sorry, Conquering and to Conquer. And uh, we're focusing on that 1 John chapter 5, verse 4 uh, verse. And here's our reading for today. Declaring salvation by faith to the world strikes at the very foundation of hell. For this reason, our adversary stirred up earth and hell to destroy those who first preached it. Likewise, knowing that faith alone could overturn the foundations of his kingdom, he called forth all his forces and employed all his arts of lies and slander to frighten Martin Luther from a from reviving this truth. Nor can we wonder at this. Luther himself observed, how would it enrage a proud armed strong man to be stopped and set at naught by a little child coming against him with a stick in his hand? And especially when he knew that the little child would surely overthrow him and tread him underfoot. Even so, Lord Jesus, your strength has always been made perfect in weakness. Go forth then, O little children who believes in him, and his right hand shall teach you terrible things. You are helpless and weak as a young infant. The strong man, Satan, will not be able to stand before you. You will prevail over him and subdue him and overthrow him and trample him under feet. March on under the great captain of your salvation, conquering and to conquer until all enemies are destroyed and death is swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God. Hmm. It's a pretty good reading from, from Wesley this morning. Well, good morning, Peggy. So, you know, my mind went this morning to thinking about how our salvation by 
how we, but, but, hold on, let me try that again. My mind went to this morning to thinking about how our salvation is indeed by faith alone and our response to faith, which is works. Now, I do firmly believe that we are saved by our faith alone and that our, by our faith, we can stand up to the evil forces of wickedness that we face in the world. But I also understand and believe that our works are a response to our faith. We read this in the book of James that faith without works is dead. And I was pondering this morning if that is might be what the world is lacking today. We have people who say they are Christian, who believe that they're saved because of their faith, but they aren't living their faith out in their works. And by works, I'm talking about growing in their faith, being part of a faith community, studying scriptures daily, and by treating others with the same love that they have received from God. Just some of my thoughts on this salvation, uh, salvation by faith alone, and our response to that salvation through our works. Love to hear your thoughts, whether you agree with me or disagree, uh, whether you've got a different take on it. And if you do, drop us a line there in the, in the chat box and we can continue the conversation. If you have found this devotion to be uh, uh, positive and speaking to you this morning, I invite you to hit that like and share button right there on Facebook. Well, friends, um, today is Wednesday. It's a beautiful day. We've got Bibles and Biscuits going on at... Uh, at Dave's and Friends in Minerals, it's our, our small group study on the book of Psalms. There's no preparation. You just show up, have a little meal with us, and uh, we delve into the scriptures. So um, hope to see some of you there. Until then, let's, uh, let's close with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, help us stop for a moment on this Wednesday and just take a second to breathe to breathe and focus ourselves on knowing that you are truly an awesome God. Focusing on the fact that everything that we have in our lives comes from you. God, we definitely know the good things come from you. and We know that the bad things, you, you are there walking with us as we travel through life. God, we ask that you grant uh, each of us what we need for today whether that's patience or kindness or love or togetherness. Help us find what we need. Lord, we ask that you be with those who uh, couldn't join us today, those who might be uh, not feeling their best and who might be suffering, uh, whatever they're suffering. God, we ask that you let them feel your loving presence around them and surround them with hope and comfort. Lord, we ask for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is a door, uh, this is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace, y'all. Bye for now. Oh, good.